Hello, Internet. Welcome to Wednesday's Serial. I am your host, this guy, and let's talk NPR. So today, I was listening to the radio on the way home because you can't read comics in the car because it's illegal, apparently. And I was listening to an interview they had with Jean Wen Yang, who was the creator of American Born Chinese. And uh, in today's interview, which I can't find online, um, I was able to find a previous one, which I'll link to below. But in today's one, they felt the need to just talk about comics as intro to reading, you know, for young adults. Comics can't be considered on their own right, on their own level. Um, which was something that kind of irked me. What's really funny is when I went back and found this older um, interview they had with him in 2014, they didn't feel the need to do that. Um, they just talked to him about the book and how he came about it and a little bit about the culture because the way he created it initially was doing, I think now it'd be more considered like a zine or an ash can, but he considered it mini comic. I think it's all just different terms for where you are at the time. Um, and that's where he started off and they talked about that. For them, that's much more novel than it might be to us as an idea. And so it was interesting to hear that, you know, in, on NPR. But today's one with the need to refer to comics as something designed for young adults, not designed for someone to just read. Um, they made a big point of, well, will this lead younger readers to just reading prose? And that's really disheartening to hear. Um, and this is something that I've been trying to find a way to talk about and a way to bring it up with people. Because for the most part, especially when you're talking like superheroes, you know, capes and tights and whatnot, it is designed for younger crowd. It's understandable why. And a lot of that, you know, is younger adult fiction stuff. And I, I get why that would be placed there and I can enjoy it whatever but the idea that there should be comics for adults um, and then there should be comics for kids and that that's something that's an interesting aspect as well. We've had that for a long time, you know, hey, comics are for kids and the stigma was fought for so long and then the way that it always goes when some art form feels the need to prove that it's not just for kids is blood, guts, gore, nudity, cursing, and just evolving to the basis instincts and showing that in the story. And like, look, it's not for kids. There's all this R-rated stuff in here, which ultimately ends up being less mature. And then it's just directed at teens more so than it is adults. And um, I encountered this mentality and struggling with it a lot when I was spending my time working the con circuit because as we were coming up and helping out Denver Comic Con, Denver Comic Con, in theory, in some years, maybe more so than less, I haven't been involved in a long time, so hopefully they're doing better now, is to support what was comic book culture classroom and is now pop culture classroom, which was something that graded me and I saw coming and part of the reason I don't deal with them anymore because it went away from comics so I stopped caring. Uh, but um, the, the initial idea was really cool and the idea was to get young kids to kind of create their own comics and to create something as good after school program, promote literacy, XYZ, all these great things that everybody can stand behind. But it did help promote this idea that comics are for kids and it was doubly bizarre to me because the person who's the founder of this or one of the main founders I should say rather is Charlemagne Le Greca 
uh, and he is very noted in the independent comic scene. Uh, he has his own podcast, Ains the Narak, and that's helped promote a great deal of off the chart and definitely what I think would be considered, you know, adult comics, like in the way I'm meaning it to be said, and, you know, off brand stuff. And so it was. It, it clearly that was not his intent, but it was something that I was seeing always grab me wrong. So to hear this on NPR was really disheartening. I was just kind of curious if anyone else has run into any similar such situations or has their own um, story maybe from growing up and continuing to read comics and maybe getting to a few awkward conversations with their parents. I know I certainly did. Or maybe a co-worker. I don't know if they had that one too. Uh, so yeah, if you ever had to deal with being in this hobby and being older than I don't know, 18, because uh, that seems to be when people start looking at you funny for liking this kid's stuff, even though now it's a lot easier to point to some image comics or, you know, go to the Vertigo thing and or like, have you not read Sandman? Come on. Uh, but I don't know. And I imagine for the previous generation, it was a lot harder because they didn't necessarily have some of the literary luminary stuff to point to because that would have just been coming out or maybe, maybe they weren't even aware of it yet and maybe they didn't care <laughs> so yeah just something I was wrapping my head around and was curious to hear what you guys thought so catch y'all soon with another comic review peace